I was always impressed that I convinced a priest to play for a hockey team called Murder. So beer league hockey is a bunch of dudes that are living their childhood again, hanging out, leave your normal life, and then go into this pocket of friends that you have and just kind of enjoying the moment with each other. That's basically what beer league is. There was one time that comes to my mind where we had gotten drunk before the game. In the middle of the third period, one of the refs says, I'm done with this, and he left the ice. You know, we've had some ups, some downs, probably mostly downs. We were not a very good team. If you want to get out of a rut, you want to play red drum. We tried all kind of motivational techniques to kind of work with Neil to keep him in the game. I tried uh, positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement even. Actually, the other players are consoling me, telling me like, you know, it's not your fault. Hey, it's nothing personal, what we're doing to you. We were actually crushing up Prozac and putting it in his water bottle so that he would keep coming back each week. Wait, what? We couldn't seem to get any calls. Other teams were starting to take runs at us. It just didn't seem to be anything we could do about it. But one day at the drop-in, I saw him. Well, I, I call him Padre because the email that came to me was Padre David Bergeron. I saw it and I thought, well, there's not a lot of Mexicans that want to play hockey. And there's not a lot of Cajuns that want to play hockey. So this guy's got to be Canadian. And Neil is always ahead of us uh, getting ready to go because he's a goalie. So I called him and I said, be on the lookout for somebody. I think we got somebody coming in here that might be special. And Neil tells me, he goes, there's some guy walking around with Habs gear on. Uh, the Montreal Canadiens, go Habs, go. That's got to be him. And then he was wearing his cross across his chest, and then that's when I knew that, you know, yeah, we really do have a Catholic priest on the team. So maybe we should start with a prayer. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Father, Let's do it. Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Drop that puck. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm uh, Father David, uh, they call me Padre, I'm French-Canadian, I don't know if you noticed that I have an accent, uh, and I love hockey. After becoming a priest, uh, there was no, not much organized hockey. Lots of the leagues are on Sunday, and so this is not something that is that accessible to me as a priest, it's a conflict of schedule, and so um, I was very grateful to be able to put the skates on again. When he first hit the ice, he was a bit rusty. He hadn't played in 11 years. But during the practice, he really started to come, come alive. Padre glides. He's the most effortless skater I've ever seen. And he'll just freeze you with his smoothness. And he has an amazing sense for the puck. He'll stick handle, he'll work his way out of traffic. He's just so crafty with his hands. And then right around the net, he's, he's unstoppable. He's got this weird softball shot, but he can put it wherever he wants it, and it's really effective. You can tell he's just a natural goal scorer. The moment that I thought that this guy was good was how much better everybody around him played. You, you get a lot of players that are good, but they don't make the team better. He makes the team a lot better. Once we started playing together with him, we started winning. So we're actually starting to win some of these close games, and Padres scoring goals in those games to put us ahead. All of a sudden, all the bounces seem to come to us. I think that we are getting those bounces because the Lord is now favoring Red Run. And he even brought to his brother, Francois, to come play with us. Francois, take the D. I looked up to my brother a lot. You know, he was 10 years older, so uh, it was pretty nice for the most part because we were so far apart. Like, he didn't have to beat me up as much. They play so well together. Sometimes we even use some secret codes uh, in French and so that uh, people don't understand. But I guess uh, at some point they might uh, want to learn French because it works and we score. The world is a small world and so even in Texas here we have uh, a cousin that we found. John Bergeron is their very distant cousin. I don't know how, but we're probably related with the same name, come from the same place. And they form the, the Bergeron one. Bergeron, go out, Bergeron, go out, power play. Man, where'd you go with the beast line, guys? The triple B line, that is a beast of a line. Padre, he calls the back of the net his rectory. Francois, he's all over the place and he hustles and he, he just causes a lot of havoc. And then John is a mauler. He sits in front of the goalie and he just causes problems. They really went out and started dominating and racking up some points. I think they had 10 points in one particular game. 
That's for the camera, that's for the camera. We need drama in this movie. This is one of my passion, uh, to try to be a blessing for the people uh, on the ice and off the ice. It's funny how people will seek him out during a game uh, to, to talk about stuff. So I've been even talking about death of uh, some people who have uh, passed away, family members of uh, some of the team members. That's not something that um, I'm used to do outside of uh, the context of the church. And so for me, it's good that I can bring that side in a very human side, in a sense, into uh, the picture. And he's always there for people. He's a super kind person. Jesus should be everywhere, even in the locker room, uh, even amidst the uh, not-so-good words. And one of the refs uh, was appalled by the language that was used by one of our young ladies in our team. Uh, I won't name names again, but uh, this lady, I'm sure, knows who she is. <laughs> Ray Lynn has a reputation for uh, the biggest trash talker probably in the league, or smallest but dirtiest player. I remember my very first encounter with Padre. We were playing dropping on Monday night, and I was playing defense. Padre ended up scoring, and I was like, no, that's bullshit. And he was like, no, that's a goal, so it's holy shit. <laughs> All of a sudden, we started winning, and I would see, see guys cross themselves on the bench and, and on the ice even. Yeah, the hand of God we need. I know he prays for us a lot. I know he brings us up with his congregation. They probably pray for us as well. A lot of people from the church come to watch him play. I don't think that they knew what hockey was until they started showing up. And I remember, you know, that you can see that they're trying to figure out what in the world's going on. Now they're actually like coming up to me and throwing hockey jargons at me. Padre has two flocks. One is his church flock, and of course his uh, hockey family, which is us. As a shepherd, as a pastor, as a priest, uh, we try to defend the sheep. My brother often has some quotes for the team before games, normally from the Bible. A lot of them have to do with like destruction and things like that. There is a saying in Latin, if you want peace, prepare for war. Late in the season, we were playing one of the weaker teams, but we were just tearing them up. And it was pretty ugly, and probably midway through the third, I told the guys on the bench, I said, Let's just take it easy on the guys, start throwing it in the corner and preserve the shutout for Neil. The very next shift, Padre goes out and goes high blocker on the side for a hat trick. And later on, I asked him, I said, so, so much for mercy uh, on that team out there. And he looks at me and he goes, mercy's for the church. <laughs> All of a sudden, we were in the finals and I thought nothing could stop us. Padre just looked me in the eye and said, I'm gonna score goals tonight, help me. Padre played like a wild man. He was on a mission to win and was not gonna lose that game. You can tell kind of like something turns in his head. One, 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 guys! He's got this really competitive edge to him. I think that's one reason why he's good. He was winning face-offs, uh, he was open, he was skating really hard like I've never seen him skate before. We ended up having a great win. It was a long time coming. It's been years since Red Worm has won the championship. Number one. And number one. After all the success we've had with Padre, just like in the NHL, we all end up having to deal with a trade. And his day job's calling him back to Canada. I'll miss everything of Red Worm. Uh, they um, gave me life again in the sense that at a difficult moment uh, we were able to pull through uh, and uh, so I'm very grateful for the friendships of the people that I've met with Red Run. The team's going to miss him and we're definitely going to miss his points. How are the fans going to feel? How do I feel about the fans? I think the fans are going to go away. No offense to uh, Raylan's mom, but now we're going to be back to just Raylan's mom. He probably averaged two points a game. We decided to retire his jersey in the Red Rum Hall of Fame. The greatest thing about hockey is the people that you get to know and play with. Hockey really unites us. I'm happy that just as 
the Catholic Church. Catholic means universal. Uh, our team is very universal as well. I have a white collar, but I guess uh, I like to be with the blue collars as well. And with beer or without beer, uh, the joy of sports and hockey and the victory is something that is inebriating. I am. Okay. Oh, it's a pass. And it's a sling. Oh, it almost went in, but it didn't. And then got okay. I could not see the puck at all. Oh, here we go. Down the middle. Looking for contact. And oh, into the wall he went. And the guy missed it. It's very sad for everybody. Got the last thing about scoring. Guy in the green takes away. Very exciting game. We don't know where it's at. Oh, it's right there. I see it. They're fighting for it. And it's gone. Uh, there's a whistle, and everybody stopped. We're he just ruined the shot.